Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and uh, we're here live at Sapphire now in Orlando. I'm here with my co-host, John Furrier, and uh, we got a very special guest, the man Reggie Jackson. He's in the house, so uh, Reggie, thanks for stopping by and visit the Cube. Sure. I, I don't know how to get here, you know. Yeah, this is on my way out. Just point you to the lights. And, uh, yeah. we well, I'm glad you could stop by and get something to eat. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's good to have you. Nice to be here. Welcome. So, Dave, what is your uh, favorite Yankee moment with Reggie, and, or, or the A's, for that matter? Well, I was a big A's fan growing up in Boston, and, uh, you know, so saw you win three in a row, and, uh, and uh, you know, saw you put a, this in my, in my heart many times as, uh, as the great Yankees, and uh, so, but my, you know, my memory is probably like most people with your, you know, series ending three homers, so, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, there's a, a lot more to your career that I'm sure we can talk about here. How about you, John? Okay. So what's, uh, tell us what's happening. You got the Callaway hat on, SAP. Callaway's a big customer of uh, EMC. We've had them on Yeah, here. we've had them on here. You. What, what's, what's your story here today? Um, well, I, I know uh, some people there that I met here, uh, you know, several months ago. And uh, one thing led to another, and I was invited down to uh, come and spend some time with them, share some time uh, with their customers and with their, really, or their organization. They had about fifteen to 20,000 people here people from all over the globe, and you know, when I met their CEO, uh, Bill McDermott, he thought that I fit for them and, uh, in, in reference to, tr to representing the brand to a point. Um, I've had some fortunate success with World Championship and uh, producing under pressure, and um, been a pretty easy guy to forecast, I guess you could say. Uh, and then, of course, with uh, uh, SAP and software and people... Um, you know, they have a fabulous culture, a great environment. Um, it feels really good when you're around all the people. You can feel that there's a push, you know, for the team to be successful. And that's very similar in, in being with the Yankees. It was very similar in being with the Oakland A's that the environment or the, the culture there was about winning and thinking about what you can do to do your job in order to make the team better. Um, it feels that way. Here, uh, when I've anybody and everyone that I've met, they're proud of the brand. They're proud to show the brand. And I'd finally asked several people, you know, what does SAP stand for? And you hear all kind of things, you know, <laughs> software and programs, and uh, somebody always pays or whatever it may be. <laughs> but um, and there was a guy that said solutions, applications, and programs. Um, in talking to their their chief executive uh, officer, one of them, uh, not Jim, but Bill, you know, he had said, Reggie, it's software and people. And that makes it easier for me to understand because, you know, with the Yankees, they have an idea of wanting to go about winning, but you have to have leadership in play, place. You have to have a players and a talent in place. And no matter what kind of plan you have of execution, it takes people to run that plan. It takes people to execute that plan. And so the, the people here is what the most important part of the SAP is the last letter, really, the people that are involved. And so I'm happy to be part of it, happy to be connected with it, and uh, it feels good to represent Reggie, we, like SAP. we actually met one time in 1993. Um, you remember? Is, uh, <laughs> you meet a lot of people, Chris. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it was in 1993 at, at Coors Field. Um, my good friend, uh, the Nick Morris family, um, had a mill in his box. I remember meeting a very short time, but uh, Jerry McMorris recently passed away this past week. Uh, one of the Rockies brought baseball to there. Uh, but he was a businessman, and I bring that up because the, my next question is really to you as a business person. Because post-baseball, you had a business career. And, and the question that I had, and, and some people on Twitter wanted to ask you was, what one skill helped you transition from sport, sporting world, to the baseball world around uh, around being successful? Was it competitiveness? Was it being prepared? Can you talk about just what it took to transition from, say, highly competitive sport to then in business and, and, and how you see that happening in today's business? I would think, um, for me, I would give you answer your question by saying, trying to think of how I would fit with other people, other businesses, other entities, if you will, what could I do to add value to a different company? Like, what can I do to add value to someone so successful as SAP or Microsoft or one of their partners that they have? 
how can I be of value to that person? Uh, and you have to humble yourself and, and be be grateful uh, in, in trying to to penetrate, you know, um, um, that environment, you know, the, the businesses that are already successful. Uh, I've been very fortunate to have have gotten along and, and engaged with some some of the significant companies that you know have got me you know to be a part of their team. Um, again, I think it's uh, additionally I think it's understanding people and understanding where you fit and making sure that your role adds value that builds equity with the brand that you want to represent. You know, in our industry, Reggie, we, we talk a lot about data, a very data-intensive world we live in. And baseball is the most data-intensive sport. And you see in a lot of action going on with like fantasy baseball and people in that analyzing things. You know, the, the, the movie and the book Moneyball come out. And, and, and it's just been a, a, a phenomenal change. Um, what do you make of all that? Uh, and do you, do you think it's as as big as some people make it out to be? You know, we're in the technology business. We like to think that the data will drive those decisions, you know, versus sort of when you played, it was a lot of gut feel and a lot of instinct. You know, I, I do think that, uh, David, right. I, David, I do think that um, data is extremely important. Um, however, without someone to implement it and without the ability to be able to just facilitate it, the data doesn't work. You have to have people, you have to have the right characters and the, you know, the people that have the right character um, which make up the correct characters uh, that represent the brand, that understand their role. Um, you need a good leader, you need a good manager, you need you know, good worker bees that are on the team and people need to understand their role or it doesn't matter what kind of data or what kind of plan you want to input. So it's extremely important to have the people involved and, and wanting to support what you're trying to do, what we're trying to do as a team. So, you know, I, I love the slogan there, software and people, because it's the people part that make the software work into being able to implement it, use it to the right, use it the right way, and give the people, not too much data because you could get cluttered with it, but just the data that's important for this particular day or is applicable to this particular job or this particular position if you're on the baseball yeah, You can't team. take the people out of the decision-making process, can you? Now, what, what a lot of people might not know is that you were obviously a multi-sport star, but you could have been a, a football player if you wanted to, but you chose, you made the decision to, to go into to baseball. Correct. Um, talk about that decision that you made. Well, it wasn't there. a very difficult decision. Um, you know, at the time, uh, my father was incarcerated. My mother is, uh, was uh, taking care of the other children in the family, and that we needed money. You were allowed to leave college and play baseball. You were not allowed to leave college and play football. I was a better football player in college than, and in high school than I was a baseball player. But the opportunity to uh, put some dollars on the table for the family was in front of me because you could leave school and go into the baseball draft. You couldn't do that right. in football, or I would have probably left. I don't think it would have been the right decision. I, I was a good enough player to have been an uh, outstanding professional football player, I believe. But, you know, the physical demands, etc., cetera, uh, certainly wouldn't have been much greater than baseball, and my, the length of the, the tenure wouldn't have been that. So it was economic. Did you ever consider both sports wh after you, you know, I, I thought about leaving baseball after my first contract squabble with Charlie Finley. But, you know, I, uh, people around me prevailed and I, you know, paid attention and prayed about things and I did make the right decision. I didn't know which decision to make. I just luckily stayed in the game of baseball and, and uh, yeah, things worked well. out. Yes. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on the Cube. Uh, it's been a home run, literally, for us to have you on and, 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 and grace us with your presence inside. We call it the ESPN of Tech. One um, crazy question from Twitter was, uh, I wanted to ask you, was that hip move intentional? Um, and it says, I guess he can afford to be honest about it now. They well, know how they are uh, on the internet. Yeah, I don't really care what, what the guy said. Uh, that's an implication that I lied about it, um, which I disappoint, disappointed. Uh, but he didn't, I mean, hopefully he didn't mean it that no, way. I don't think he did. But um, what happened there was I was fortunate enough to have, in my view, I saw Billy Russell catch the ball and drop it. It didn't just hit his glove and go right to the ground. So in fast motion, 
that was a slow motion that he did for me because I was at real time. So I picked up instinctively on what he was about to do. I was automatically out because all he had to do was fight, run to the bag and throw the ball to first base. He could catch with the ball. So as soon as he dropped the ball and went to second base, he then leaves the ball live. And if you hit a runner in the base path, there's a three-foot move you have on each side of that line, which gives you six feet to move in. I stayed in my space because I had made throws before, perfect throws to third base. I remember in a playoff game, I made a perfect throw to third base in the open Coliseum and hit Al Kaline in the back because he was sliding at the same time. He was probably smart enough to get in the line of the throw to interfere because he was out. Uh, I was out, so the person, Russell, threw the ball at me, and the reason I turned my hip because I had been facing him. I didn't want to get hit in the wrong part of the hip area while I was facing him, so I turned my hip to the side, so I got hit on the, on the big muscle rather than in the wrong area. Here he is on the cube, Reg Reggie Jackson, a legend. Thank you so much for joining us. All SAP, right, got the Callaway hat on. Uh, people, business, <laughs> about performance, about attitude, competitiveness. Um, he's done it all. Thank you so much on the business side and on sports. Appreciate it. You know, for more information, they can go to ReggieJackson.com if you want. I'm thinking about doing Twitter. I'm on there now, but I'm a little nervous about announcing and <laughs> learning. <laughs> Follow if he goes long. That's yeah, I we'll think uh, we'll Jack here. Dorsey... Uh, the guy that, that founded uh, is, is helping me. And once I get my nerve up, I'm at, let me see, I'm, um, October, Mr. October at Reggie or Reggie at, at, at Mr. It's a October. verified account. We'll tell, we'll I'm take either care Reggie at Mr. October or October at Reggie, something like that. Well, you know what? We'll help you with Twitter. If you just tell the camera, the cube's a home run, and we'll, we'll take care of it. It's at October Reggie. At October Reggie. No, I don't okay. even know what it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thanks, guys, and uh, hey. thanks for having me on. Thank you. Great job. Media. All right. Reggie Jackson, great person, great okay. human being, but a great sports star and businessman, very successful inside the cube. And we'll, and we'll go get any story we can in technology. If it's from athletes, from the celebrities, if they have something to share, we will share it with you. This is the cube, our flagship telecast, the ESPN of tech. And we had a Hall of Famer in baseball on it right there, Reggie Jackson. And we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.